And Nancy Pelosi in Syria and in the crosshairs of Vice President Cheney. Is she on her way to becoming the most controversial House Speaker yet? You're in the Situation Room. Hi, this is Josh Marshall from TPM Media. It's Monday, April 9th, 2007. You were just listening to Suzanne Malveaux of CNN asking whether Speaker Nancy Pelosi is on her way to being the most controversial Speaker of the House in U.S. history. This, of course, is about the trip that the Speaker made to Damascus, Syria last week. And if you watch any right-wing media, you'll know they've been all over this. It was screaming headlines from Drudge for most of the week. Vice President Cheney went on the Rush Limbaugh show. Uh, even the Washington Post editorial page got into the act uh, saying that this was Pelosi's pratfall in Damascus. Pelosi in Damascus said that she was delivering a message of peace from the Israelis, but then the Israeli Prime Minister's office released a statement saying, well, no, we didn't send this message with Pelosi. And the Post editorial page, which is surely one of the worst major editorial pages in the country at this point, called it her pratfall. Let me read a part from you. Only one problem. The Israeli Prime Minister entrusted Pelosi with no such message. Ms. Pelosi not only misrepresented Israel's position, but was virtually alone in failing to discern that Mr. Assad's words were mere propaganda. Now, I've suspected pretty much from the start that there's more to this Pelosi story than meets the eye. And here's why. Last week, I was at one of my favorite blogs, Belravia Dispatch. And the author of that blog, Greg Derigian, linked to an article in Haaretz. Now, Haaretz is one of the main Israeli daily papers. And there was an article by Aluf Ben, who's their diplomatic correspondent. Now, this was before Pelosi ever got to Damascus. And he's writing, describing a message that the Israelis are giving Pelosi to send to Damascus. Let me quote a part of it. The Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi, is scheduled to meet with Syrian President Bashar Assad in Damascus today and will deliver a message of calm from Israel. Quote, we hope the message will be understood, political sources in Israel said yesterday. And here's the key. This is before Pelosi ever got to Damascus. So if there's no message, why are the Israelis uh, talking about the message they're sending the day before? Now, I think we have a possible answer. Another article by one of my favorite reporters, uh, Ron Campias from the Jewish Telegraphic Agency goes over the entire controversy and a possible answer he comes up with is meddling from the White House. He suggests that the White House may have gone to Prime Minister Omer's office and pressured them to release this statement to embarrass Speaker Pelosi. One of the people that Campias talks to is Representative Tom Lantos of California. He's the chairman of the House Foreign Relations Committee. He was on the trip with Pelosi. He was there in Jerusalem in the meetings, and he was there in Damascus. He says that everything that Pelosi said was exactly what the Israelis told her to say. And he gave this quote to Campius, quote, It's obvious the White House is desperate to find some phony criticism of the Speaker's trip, even though it was a bipartisan trip. I have nothing but contempt and disdain for the attempt to undermine this trip. Now, which is it? Did the White House try to embarrass Pelosi by getting the Israeli Prime Minister's office to release this statement. We've heard almost nothing about this in the U.S. press. This week we'll be looking forward to see whether there's more reporting, whether there's more following up on this, and we'll let you know what we hear. This is Josh Marshall from TPM Media, and we'll see you again tomorrow.